Algebra 2 CRIM New York State Algebra 2 Regents, but no sweat, this is a common core Algebra 2 CRIM session, so it's not limited to New York State. It can be used for any Algebra 2 course throughout the United States. Shout out to Cali, Florida, Texas, I see you. Oh yeah, Georgia too. As well as any Algebra 2 course throughout the world. Shout out to India, the UK, and Jamaica. All right, trigonometric functions. Question four, range of a function. Y equals A, the cosine of BX. The odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 master. Okay, if I can stick every single Algebra 2 student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I definitely would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to get your healthy boost by ordering the complete Algebra 2 cram session. You have lots of friends, classmates, peers, or maybe even colleagues who are taking Algebra 2 with you as well. Tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order the complete cram session. You'll be glad you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. Question four, range of a function. What is the range of the function g of x is equivalent to four the cosine of two x? Definitely press pause if you need a brief moment to think about this answer. The answer is actually pretty obvious, but for <clears throat> Those of us who are not completely familiar, in order to determine what the range of a function is, you first need to understand the concept of the range. The range is the set of all the possible outputs of the function, okay? So whatever you get when you plug an x value in here, all right? It, you could refer to the outputs as the dependent variables. Uh, sometimes they're called y values. These are the values found along the vertical axis of the coordinate plane where the function graph might be plotted. All right, and this particular cosine function is of the format y equals a the cosine of bx. And if you had watched my trigonometry basics cram sessions, you would have known that the leading coefficient a is not only a factor that you can use to multiply the cosine to give it either a vertical stretch or vertical contraction, um, but you could also determine the amplitude from A because A is actually the numerical value of the amplitude. And also, if you had watched my trigonometry basics cram sessions, you would have known that the cosine along with the sine and tangent functions are centered about the x-axis. So this tells you the, the maximum extent above the x-axis as well as the maximum extent below, hence the name amplitude. Okay, so um, the amplitude itself is always going to be the absolute value of a. And since we know the amplitude of this trigonometric function, we can definitely determine the entire range. Don't be quick to go ahead and say, okay, uh, y equals four is the range. Because even if you try to say that, you're gonna say, wait, the range is like a, on flat, only at the level floor. I don't, you know what I'm trying to say, okay. So given that the function has an amplitude of four, that means that it goes up um, four units from the x-axis as well as four units down from the x-axis. Hence, the range is going to be negative four is less than or equivalent to y is less than or equivalent to four, okay? So the interval between negative four and four inclusive. And a graph of the function will definitely confirm this range. But in order to make graphing this easier, I'm just going to use my graphing calculator. And the first thing that I do after turning it on is I go to the mode uh, window and I make sure that I'm in radian mode because 
When plotting the graphs of trigonometric functions, you get a better view or visual by uh, going to reading mode. So I go down uh, twice and over to the right once, okay? And then I go to my equation editor, um, my y equals equation editor, and I input the function for the cosine of 2x. Don't get hung up on the fact this is g of x. It's just a, an output or a dependent variable, and that's what y will always represent. Okay, so h of x, g of x, f of x. These terms are interchangeable with the term y. And before viewing uh, the visual, I go ahead and hit zoom. And then I hit 7 to get the zoom trig window because when you zoom trig, your calculator does these intricate calculations that makes the screen more accommodating to a trigonometric function. That's why we entered radian mode, okay? All right, so now I go ahead and graph. And you definitely see that this cosine graph is oscillating between negative 4 and 4. It goes up, up 4 hashes from the x-axis as well as down 4 hashes from, or 4 units. I say hashes a lot from the x-axis, okay? All right, so that's it. The graph definitely confirms the range of this function.